people are interested to find out the extent to which early life growth is under genetic control versus due to environmental influences. And a very powerful design to unpick this is a twin study. And the reason for that is that identical twins are 100% genetically the same. Non-identical twins are on average only 50% genetically the same. But importantly, both types of twins share their environments to an extremely similar extent. They're gestated in the same mother for the same amount of time, they're exactly the same age, they grow up in the same family, they tend to go to the same school, etc. So we assume that the only real difference between them is that identical twins are twice as similar genetically than the non-identical twins. And for that reason, you can compare how similar identical twins are on measures of early life growth compared to non-identical twins. And if the identical twins are much more similar, then that's an indication that there's a strong genetic contribution to early life growth. It surprises quite a lot of people to find out that body weight, including early life infant growth, is quite highly genetic. And it seems somewhat at odds with what we know about the dramatic changes in the environment that have occurred over the course of the obesity epidemic. So we're in the situation now where there's the seeming paradox of both genetic and environmental determination of weight. So we've been trying to find out what the mechanisms are through which the genes are influencing weight, which allows for environmental influences to take effect as well. And the model that we've come up with is called an appetite model of obesity. So we've been studying really two particular aspects of appetite that we believe influence early life growth rate and are themselves influenced by genes. So one of these particular dimensions of appetite you might think of as the tendency to start eating. It's what we call food responsiveness or milk responsiveness if you're an infant. And that is how avidly you respond to food cues in the environment when they're there. Are you the type of individual who, when you walk past a bakery and it smells really delicious, you want to go in and eat something? The other aspect of appetite that we study is what we might think of as eating offset, the tendency to stop eating once you start. And that's really um, trying to understand how someone's fullness sensitivity, if you like, influences their weight. So some individuals fill up quite quickly when they start eating and then they remain full for quite a while before they want to eat again. Other individuals will be much more guided by how much food there is on the plate and they will eat until there's no food left. And they're an individual who's less tidy sensitive. So we've been interested in finding out whether genes are influencing early life growth through influencing an infant's appetite level. And that allows for early life growth, body weight as a child or an adult, to be both genetic and environmental at the same time. So an individual's genes will influence how susceptible they are or how vulnerable they are to overeating in response to the current obesogenic environment. So an individual who is very food responsive or low on satiety sensitivity is much more likely to overeat when confronted with the, the, the amount of food or the food cues that we have in the, in the environment that we live in today. So I think what we can learn from our research is that although it's very nice to have an infant who has a hearty appetite and they're growing very well, um, a child or an infant who is demonstrating extreme food responsiveness and very low satiety sensitivity and growing very fast is actually at risk of obesity later in life. And although these traits might seem um, quite healthy, in infancy, actually, if they're excessive, that might indicate to the parent that some more restrictive measures need to be brought in to manage those appetitive characteristics to prevent excessive weight gain.